Are we live? All we're, right. We're live. What's going on, guys? Welcome to FTL Podcast, episode four. We have Pete James, of course, and we also have a special guest today, Chris Morrison from CMC Enterprises. The one and only. <laughs> a local legend, if you will. Yeah, fuck, um, fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a very interesting uh, podcast. Chris has a lot to say on a lot of topics, and he's been around. Chris is somebody who has been a very good friend of mine since, um, I'd say, late childhood, early early adolescence, and uh, he introduced me to a lot of new ways of thinking. He opened up my mind to a lot of, uh, you know, new thought processes and the way things really are as far as life and negativity and positivity and uh, life beyond BMX and... Uh, Vagina and things like that. So, <laughs> let's. Uh, where are you? Where are you from, Chris? Let's 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 well, familiarize the people with you. I got a question for you before I forget. Th- did any of those ways of thinking help your life at all? Um, no. All right, good. No, I'm uh, I'm pretty fucked. All right. Um, but you know, I keep going. Every day is a new day. But um, I mean, I I don't think you put me in any further in any worse position. You know that I was already going. I, was, I mean, I was already on that. On that path, that downward. Trajectory. Yeah, I had already had the trajectory yeah, yeah. going. And maybe I just gave you a, a couple of kicks. Well, you were just like, you know, you're not alone. We're all fucking up. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, well, we are all are fucking well, up. Chris. <laughs> what? It, it looks like you were just rolling around in the mud. Yeah, yeah, I was. What? And it looks like Peter's hands just tried to clean you off. What I did. Happened? Yeah, yeah, he's pretty dirty too. <laughs> he's a dirty guy though. <laughs> Were you yeah. laying some brick today? Yeah, yeah, we were we were working today, you know, and that's that's what it's all about, you know, purposeful existence. What's that called? Your that's called dharma, right? Well, that, that, that's, that's that's not what dharma is. Your no. duty, accepting your you, duty. Yeah, you do have to accept your duty, you know. Okay. Yeah. And my duty happens to be in the mud. In your, the mud. Yours looks like it's in the deep mud. I don't know if I've necessarily found my purpose or my duty yet, but um, I'm you know every day. You know, every single day is a new learning experience. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if you will find your purpose. Yeah, I might just fucking lose it. You might just flail away into space. You never know, man. <laughs> That's something I want to talk about with you. Is I want to talk to you about this. Um, I want to. I want to hear a little bit about Chris's past before we dive into. What do you, you want to hear? Shit. What do you want to hear? Yeah, I don't even know if he wants to talk about it. it I mean, Chris <laughs> has got some very funny stories from back in the day. He's also got some nicknames. Uh, he's the Santa Slayer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chris. One time he he stabbed Santa with a screwdriver. He wasn't the first Long Island BMX on the news for trespass. Oh my God, he wasn't property. No. Yeah. He's the the real. Infamous trajectory. for my sins, yeah, I know. My mug shot smeared on News 12. <laughs> you looked so I sad. I followed in your footsteps. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the uh, inspiration. Well, I'm glad that I could be of inspiration to such uh, inspirational youth like so, you, the two of you. So what happened with that, if you don't mind talking about that? What? Getting arrested for stabbing the fucking snow globes? <laughs> yeah. Um, you looked so sad. In the well, that, that was a pastime as far as, you know, when I grew up, you know, we rode BMX, but we didn't just ride BMX. I mean, we did a lot of fucked up shit. I mean, this is before security cameras, cell phones, social media, and nobody had a cell phone in 2004 or five. I mean, I had a Boost Mobile maybe in 07. Well, isn't that how you got caught? Well, yeah, but I'm talking about when we started vandalizing things like that. I guess I was young, you know, 11, 12 years old. And uh, those those inflatable decorations were an easy target. They just looked so <laughs> stabbable. But they were fucking stabbable, and I, you know that was the thing. It's actually funny that you asked me about that because I was sitting with a guy that used to ride BMX the other day. He's another early legend. I'm not going to say his name on here, but uh, we know him. You might know him. He's old school, but uh, you know he was the one that started the inflatable destroying and all the destruction. And, uh, you know, he handed it down to us like a torch, the younger generation. And, you know, we were, we were allowed to get away with, you know, doing fucked up shit. And then, you know, I, I got in trouble. Was this like a serial thing? Were you like a serial Santa slasher? Was it like a regular thing? It was thing? a yearly thing for like a couple of years. Yeah, when, when, you know, when the holidays came around, we'd jump in somebody's car. We always had somebody older than us. We'd jump in the car. 
We'd have some sharp objects, a machete, tomahawk, blade, whatever, broken <laughs> drumstick. Um, tomahawk. And we'd roll through, uh, you know, Dick's Hills. We'd go to the rich neighborhoods. Oh, yeah, and, those motherfuckers. And we'd run up the front lawn and we'd trash the things. So. Well, those things are also the cheesiest Christmas decorations. Yeah, it was, uh, if you ask me, it was good, <clears throat> clean fun. But, you know, we got, we got in some trouble. You know, it was funny when we got arrested that night. The uh, the arresting officer said to me, "He's like, well, listen." They caught you in the act, or they came to your door? No, 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 no. We got caught because uh, we went back to the scene to find my cell phone that, <laughs> that, that I kicked out of the car, and we had a, a truck full of, you know, fucking nativity. Uh, characters. We had the uh, the Virgin Mary, Joseph. Oh, you were kidnapping them too. Oh yeah, we had baby Jesus in the back. We had the whole nine. Um, you know, we Jeez. had the, the three wise men. You know, we ripped some SpongeBob fucking Santa's face off. You know, and it was under the seat. Yeah, and we uh, you know we got bagged, and the cop said to us, he's like, listen, uh, you know, you could just tell me what what drugs are you guys fucked up on. And not one of us was on drugs, you know. That's just who we were. We were just fucked up. Yeah. You know, and that's, I think that was a lot of... Yeah, no, that's, that's why I, I think when I was... I mean, you're not you're not older than me, but you're, you know, two years older than I'm me. I'm so. older than you. Yeah, you're older than me in a way where you have a little bit more experience. So I gravitated towards your type of person because I, I was coming up and, like, I was like, oh, man, no, I'm, I'm feeling crazy. I feel... Fu- by the way, you came stocked with two full bottles of Pellegrino. I, that's a, that's the first for us. But Stay um, hydrated, thirsty. Yeah, congratulations on um, you know sobriety and everything. Oh, thank you for much. And um, yeah, but um, yeah, I was gravitated towards um, chaos. Towards chaos too, and and a more realistic approach to, of life where everyone else was like follow your dreams and you were like your dreams aren't shit <laughs> you know you were you were more of like a realist and i, I mean what's the word a nihilist oh uh, well would you consider yourself a nihilist i would consider myself uh battling nihilism okay everyone on here is 13 that's watching this so explain what that is ni- not true 13 to 18, 18. to 24 is comment crazy. if you're over 18 all right nihilism uh you know nihilism is kind of like a a place of meaninglessness. You know, everything's meaningless. So why? Why do anything? Because this is, we're all just hurling around on a fucking rock. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to die anyways. And nothing really amounts to shit. You know, you can go to work. You can not go to work. You can have money. You can be a homeless guy. Because in the end, you're just going to be fucking dust Dead. anyways. Yeah, so it sounds difference? fucking depressing. Uh, well, well, yeah. It's, that's a, that, this is, a, this is an right. ideology. Pe- still- Peter asked me if I'm a nihilist. I would say, I mean, if you talked to me two, three years ago, yeah, I was absolutely a nihilist. Um, you know, now, no, not so much. What do you think caused you the re- shift? You went full fucking, full into it. No, you didn't hold back anything. Yeah, full, full, head on, baby. You had the, the career job with the pension. Oh, the, yeah. The cl- apartment, the car, the we cars, both We both had it. We multiple both- things. Yeah, but Morrison was like, whoosh, next thing you know, he's sleeping on the beach, nothing. Yeah, yeah, well, you But know, you were free, though. For, well, that's the thing. Freedom's overrated. I mean... It, thank you. Freedom, free will can be really overrated. Uh, John, John Paul Sartre said, uh, we are condemned to be free. And he said this in the 30s, which is interesting. Yeah. Because he wrote that when he was in a, in a German uh, POW camp and, you know, during World War II. Uh, he said that's that's the problem with human existence. We're condemned to be free. We actually have the freedom to make our own choices and live our own lives. And that's the burden of, of human existence, you know? Um, Instead of having, like, a set... Yeah, well, everybody wants to be told what to do. I mean, nobody really wants to, you know... Why do you think people work jobs instead of owning their own businesses? You know, waking up in the morning and doing something without somebody telling you to is tough. Yeah. You gotta find your own, your own well, inspiration. Like, yeah, every day. yeah. I feel like a lot of people like like patterns, like to do things in like a pattern, pattern organized, organized yeah. way. They want they like to have their daily schedule order. Or yeah, people. A lot of people like order because they you know a lot of people can't you know yeah. search and then anything, you know it's almost like a cop out. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, life without order is chaos. Is, is chaotic. Yeah, but. You know, if you can manage the chaos, you can you can also you know you can rise above the herd. I mean, you know. Yeah, but as I was saying, when I was a, when I was a, a lad, 
and everybody oh, was was being uh, you know unrealistic. You know, you you were uh, you talking about grade school. No, I'm talking about when I was fucking uh, freaking out, 15, 16, You know, riding mm-hmm. bikes, mm-hmm. fucking shit up, crashing cars, crashing car, yeah, whatever the fuck it was, stealing shit. It was more, you know, I was everyone else was um, starting with the social media. This was when you know when I was like sixteen. That's when the Instagram was starting and all that shit. And uh, everyone was, you know, in this fake. Everyone was. Tr- that's when everyone was like really starting to be fake. And I was like uh, not understanding of it. And then I, I latched on real quick, and I learned how to you know manipulate it and be a part of it. But. You know, what's some advice that you would give to a kid growing up now? Because think about these kids that are like, a kid that's born in fucking 2000 is about, it's, it could be, it's about to be 19 years old. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean. That's a thought in itself. I've seen kids like that. So what is what what is a tip to a kid growing up now to not be necessarily too influenced in this oversaturation of like fucking uh, narcissistic social media and like um, this facade that like you know you can only ex- like it's almost as if people have two lives yeah I mean it, it, you know I've, I've seen it I grew up without the social media and it, which is crazy because you know I only I'm 27 next month um, you know and I would say that there's a lack of authenticity in today's world, definitely in today's youth, and just just the, the, just the entire world uh, across the board. I mean, everybody's on Instagram pretending there's somebody that they're not. You know, females are on Instagram. We we all know what they're doing. I'm trying um, to mate. Everyone's trying to mate. Uh, they don't even know what it is. Chris has a term for females. <laughs> um, it's but, way nicer than saying bitch or something. You don't want to make people hate Billy for having me on here. I mean, no, yeah, no I'm related. We, we Chris, Chris calls females mantises, like a praying mantis. Because what a praying mantis is, what a praying mantis does is, um, it mates with a male, right? Yeah, the feet. Well, hold on, let me start it out. Yeah, how does it start? The the female, first of all, is four times the size. I need of a beer male. for this. Yeah, a, a beer. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Fuck. Yeah, I can hear you. What's next? A fucking bump of coke. <laughs> <laughs> He's drinking a ten point eight percent beer right now. Yeah. You have right. any Montauks? No. All right, so I'm drinking this fucker. Um. Yeah. I'm driving gonna, home. <coughs> you're gonna hate that. Don't get a D way. I'll drink it. How hey, you got? You got one of those things before, right? How is that? D-wing? Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> Sucks. Don't. Right. I don't recommend it. Go. Go more <laughs> into the into the praying mantis mating. Well, you know it's. I mean, the human species is synonymous with nature. Even if we think we're not, we think we've created a nature that's not of nature. But, um, you know, the female praying mantis, she's fucking four times the size of the male. And, you know, he, of course, he prances around and, you know, he tries to get her to fuck him. And then and then, then she fucks him. And then when she's done fucking him... She eats his fucking head. She eats his head because she's hungry because she's pregnant. She's got babies to feed inside her. So she fucking eats him. And that's his purpose. And his purpose is just to fuck her and get his head eaten? Yeah, and think about the, the depressing back end of that. Think about the mantis that doesn't get eaten. And then he lives the rest of his life. Like, without, why didn't they eat me? Without getting fucked. Yeah, like, he wasn't even good enough to be eaten by the female. And that's, that, I mean, look at the social media world. Look at today. I mean, there's yeah, plenty man. of guys running around like, fuck, I can't get eaten. I want to get eaten. And they're trying <laughs> real hard on Instagram. Like, eat me. And it goes back to that condemned <laughs> being free thing. I mean, guys don't want to be free. They want to come home and have some nagging broad tell them, Johnny, give me the paycheck. They think they do. They think they do, and then they don't. Everybody's fucked up. Nobody knows what they want. Well, you know, you can, I mean, there, there's exceptions. I know gr- some girls that aren't, you know, as, as, um, flamboyantly mantis. Yeah? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. I know some girls that well, I think that have some, some genuine... Well, I got a pen right here. Why don't you write their phone numbers down? <laughs> <laughs> and Pete, so I, 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 I know you know some in. girls who are very on the other end of the spectrum as well who want to you know some bleed girls you that, dry. You know some girls that got. like to do drugs. I think I just got thing. killed. I, you know what I mean? I think a mantis just fucking ate me and I'm just... I just, I just uh, I'm like a starfish and mm. I grew my head back and I'm ready to get it fucking ate again. Yeah, well... That's how I'm feeling. I, I know that feeling, and mm-hmm. then you know what? Your head will grow back, and then another bitch will—I mean, mantis will bite, bite it, it off. bite it right <laughs> off. But we're not going to be doing real well with the feminists on this podcast, I guess. Yeah, we're—I mean, I'm not a misogynist, but um, you—I mean, we should have invited a feminist to get on here with you. next time. You know what? I had one. I had one on call too. Should have done it. Bring on one of mine and Peter's ex-girlfriends or something. 
They won't even come. <laughs> yeah, they definitely won't. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you're fucking them. I'm good in that department, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm I got sure. the dagger dick. Yeah, yeah, that, you got a fucking yeah. needle. I'm done. I know. I'm just projecting insecurities. All right, can we get back to talking about some real topics? Not your pecker. Is there, Not the man just theory. Is there anything, What's, any any stories that you would want to talk about from back in the day? That which back in the day? Like from um, when I like. Legend, urban legends that I would hear, bef- like as I met you or before I met you, oh. of you just like doing crazy shit. Because you ha- you rode BMX for how long? Oh, I must have started <clears throat> 2000. I don't know what am I now? I must have started 13, 14 years ago. So that would put us back in uh, what 2005, 2004. Um, I mean, it was a different world. I was just sitting at a party with a guy on. Uh, Saturday night that I used to ride with and we were talking about some pretty reckless stuff. I mean, I remember uh, You know, we were talking about a one particular Moment when uh, somebody had gotten another fellow BMX rider kicked out of school some girl She was sitting in a Taco Bell in Deer Park and the older BMX riders that I was just getting You know into the group with you know, I was just starting to ride. This was a different world and I was, uh, you know, learning my 180s and my feeble grinds. They told me, uh, hey, Chris, why don't you run in there and dump this cup of piss on that girl's head? And I said, nah, do I have to? And they said, yeah, otherwise we'll kick your ass and then you can't ride with us anymore. So that was enough right Jesus there. Christ. So I went in there and I dumped the piss on her head and their boyfriend came flying out of the Taco Bell. And Did he get in her mouth? Oh, fuck, it was all over, and everybody was spitting Damn, in the I cup never of even piss heard this story. Uh, it was terrible, and, uh, you know, I dumped the piss on her, and I ran out of the Taco Bell. Her boyfriend came out, grabbed me, gave me a couple of slugs, and, uh, you know, and then everybody I was riding with came out and kicked his ass, and, you know, it was like the movie Kids. Did you guys ever see Kids? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think um, a lot of my high school life was like the movie Kids. Yeah, Did, yeah. I think a lot I of people I didn't, would say that. Though. I didn't get it. No, but I really lived it. Can we? Well, the AIDS part is definitely yeah, true. Yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. Jesus. Can we you're all not agree getting laid anymore. The, the degree of shit that you can get away with back in the day. Oh, of so recklessness crazy. or just like things that were acceptable in more of like a different realm. Like... Just like everyone's so sensitive these days. Well, like nobody Twitter is so sensitive. You can't say certain words. You can't say everyone's gonna get offended. At you bat an eye at the wrong the wrong way at somebody. Somebody's offended. You know, you call somebody. Well, hey, what's I up, mean, man? They're not I mean, like, yeah, we're, just, we're we're definitely living in a liberal change. A li- well, yeah, everyone is definitely triggered. Liberal's yeah. not even the word. I mean, we're just living in an age of fucking unrealisticness. Yeah, this is sensitivity. A, this is a violent planet. I mean, that's how we got here. Um, you know, things die every day. Uh, weak things die. Um, Strong things survive. Yeah, we're not. You know, we're living in a world where everybody thinks like they're entitled to even existing, which you're not. I mean, you, you know, you could just. Yeah, the world eat. doesn't really owe you anything, and you. No, no, no. Life is something you got to fight for. Um, but you know, going back to getting away with stuff. I mean, when we were younger, it was just a different world. I mean, you you went and rode a BMX spot, and the security guards came out to kick you out. You told them to go fuck themselves. And dude, I know a story <laughs> of what was the worst that happened. The cops showed up, and everybody sped off. Now there's security cameras everywhere. I mean, it's almost like living in like some kind of dystopian uh, fucking futuristic simulation. Like, like some strange, uh, you know. I don't know, some strange movie. They're just like lighting fires in the trails every fucking day and like. Oh my god, yeah, yeah I, I forgot about that. I totally like, lit I totally lit a whole section of woods on fire one when, time. When's the last time you've seen the Utah trails on fire? I I mean when I grew up we had a warehouse where the Deer Park Outlets is now and we used to go in there and light it on fire, set up block to talk about that. I think I wanna talk about I wanna talk about um your book. What about my book? No, Chris has a book that was written. And I've I've seen bro, I take this I don't, just well you fucking have it why don't you drink it? It's <laughs> I didn't fun. buy it it's not mine. This is so it. bad. No. Who, okay I'm so whoever is uh, B S on the range, this is fucking disgusting. It's imperial stout with marshmallows, graham crackers, milk, sugar, cinnamon. You, you would you would think it'd be fucking delicious. This, it tastes like shit. Well, you may be better off with a PBR or something. Oh my god I would slug a PBR right now. Yeah. That's fucking nasty, unless you're a stout guy. No. Fuck yeah. that. Yeah, it's disgusting. I was going to have the rest of your Montauk. 
You want some of this? No, I'm good. I'm not rich enough to drink Pellegrino. Oh. When the last time they asked you, you want sparkling or still? Why are you trying to act like you drink sparkling? Anyway, I want to talk about Chris's book. Chris has a book, right, called Lagersville. It's it's uh it's in editing right now, right? Yeah, my editor just emailed me yesterday. He got you back to final draft. So no, he didn't actually. He's been fucking me around for like uh, almost. I don't know, a couple of months now, since August. Dude, this book's been in the works for like eight years now. No, no it, it has, has not. Uh, two I years. finished writing it like a year and some change ago. Then I, you know, a suffered. book is different. Yeah. My head got bitten off by a mantis, and I wasn't, I wasn't paying much attention <laughs> to it. And I finished the bulk <laughs> of the writing actually in like, uh, you know, January 2017. Um, you know, and sat around. Yeah. Editing is a pain in the ass. So now just, editors. just give us a summarization, right? Of um, you know, what are the main principles of the book? When could we be expecting it? And, and what exactly was the writing process? And what did you have to live in order to be able to ch- transpose that onto fucking paper? Transpose? I don't know the right word. Is that a word? Transpo- term? Transcend? Transcend. I don't know fucking shit, Chris. Transcend? What does transpose mean? What that word I mean? I don't know if transpose is a word. I know it's a musical term. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It means to change things. Yeah. You, you, well. From an octave um, to another octave. Let's see. Uh, you know, I was I was dealing with a period of my life where everything began to seem meaningless. I maybe because things came really easy to me. I was 22, 23. I was making a you know over a hundred thousand dollars a year. I had a brand new truck, living in a nice apartment on the water. Uh, I was living in a nice apartment in the city too. Um, you know and. I don't know, futility kicked in and things just started to seem meaningless. I mean, What's futility? Futility, um, you know, like uh, dealing with the long duration of life. Everything's monotonous. You're dealing with it every day. Like existentialism? Um, <laughs> it, it all intertwines with each other. Not yeah. exactly existentialism, but... Um, yeah, and that's, you know, that's just how I felt at 22. I mean... You know the the whole rat race, the entire thing. I mean, and, and what was it all really for? To like get laid and get your dick sucked or something? I mean, it was just, you know, it was pointless. Um, yeah. You know, so uh, I guess for myself, I started to uh, mentally self destruct in a way. You know, I figured, all right, well, what's the point? What do you do? You get rich and you buy a house and then you get some whinge and broad to marry you and you got kids. Fucking have a kid. I mean, this is my mind state then. Now, now I'm all about the whinging broad and the kids. Are you really though? Are you ready for that? I'm not ready for it. Yeah, well, you're a kid. You say that, but I'm not really a kid. I've been through the same shit. I had the fucking the union job in the city. I had the fucking apartment on 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 St. Mark's Lower East Side. I did all the fucking hedonistic things where I you're go out. You're still doing the hedonistic. I do. Things. I know. I can't escape. Maybe it. Maybe when you get past the hedonistic, and that's what we're going to talk about next is hedonism, because. I mean, uh, along with the social media and the narcissism and all that, what what really needs to be combated today is is hedonism and and people's false sense of happiness. I mean, you know, and the idea that happiness even exists. Um, well, it's know. all chemicals, man. You know that. It is I mean, all chemicals. So, I mean, if, 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 if any dopamine. if happy if anything exists and happiness exists. If this fucking chapstick exists and happiness exists, uh, it's, it's I mean, I don't know. Is it nothingness? Is it somethingness? I have no idea. Well, that's the whole thing of balance in life, right? What there. were you asking me? So just about the book, like you know, what kind of experiences did you have to live in order to be inspired enough? Mm, to, yeah, yeah. To, oh, to actually to take the initiative to fucking write a, a All whole right, yeah, fucking so, novel. So take me back, uh, twenty three. Years you old. know, and I've got I've got all this uh, I've got all this adulting to maintain and. You know, I've got a bunch of alcoholic broads that I can go and get laid with. and You know, and, and, and basically hedonism is how you deal with that futility. I mean, everybody, you know, you hear it every week. Everybody, what do they do? They go to work Monday through Thursday so they can what? Go Live and, for Friday. Yeah, so they can go and weekend it up, blow their paycheck on some alcohol, pretend that they like some old friends from high school for a couple of hours and... You know, and then they, they what if they're lucky, they go home with somebody from the bar, or maybe they've got like a booty call, somebody wants to sleep with them. You know, it's it's all like hedonism is how we deal with this uh, crazy futility of, of life. And, 
Yeah, I think that's what I did to the extreme almost. Well, I think it's because everybody wants a reward center. As humans, we crave the dopamine release. So they're like reward oriented beings. Yeah, exactly. So did you read uh, The Hacking of the American Mind by. Uh, no, I didn't. I don't really read, but. Um, yeah, you should. You should no, if I read, if I read, I'd be a completely different animal. I would just be a fucking. I'd probably be smart like me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but anyway, I think that. I think that like that that sort of uh, weekly cyclic hedonistic pattern of like working, hating your fucking job, and feeling that low of that midweek fucking hump day shitty job experience. Hump day. Yeah, like oh, we're almost to Friday. With my girl. Yes, yeah, and yeah. I feel like when I would go to your apartment in Long Island City, every day was like a Friday night. Yeah, well, because the problem is, is <laughs> that like people like me. And Charlie, like, we're, we're not fucking functional human beings in the, in the way that we're going to go to work and then we're going to go out on Friday and have a few beers. No, I'm going to go out on Friday and I'm going to have a few beers and then I'm going to hit a bump in the bathroom and then I'm going to get drunk till fucking Tuesday. And then, you know, you're going to find me in a dumpster on Thursday. You're going to find me drinking vodka in the morning. Friday because, morning. you know, anything I do, I'm going to take it to the extreme. That's just how I was. BMX to the extreme. Uh, you know, and then, then I tried to assimilate into society. And you take, uh, you know, you take those things to the extreme. I mean, that's that's my mentality. And, uh, you know, I got I to gotta deal with that every day. I think but, uh, one night... In Babylon on a Monday night, I went to meet my friend Bill, who was in town for a couple of days, and get a drink at Mary's. And you were outside banging on the window. Yeah, probably. They used to throw me out all the time. I'm, I'm banned. You're for barred life. for life, right? Banned you tried for to life. walk in with your hood on one night when we were just going out, and they spotted you from a mile away. They're like, no, that fuck. Oh guy. yeah, no, they, they fucking forget about it. That whole town. Um, You're probably banned from a good fifty establishments. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, towards the end of my drinking, you just I was just not a, a pleasurable thing to be around. I mean, you know, talk about nihilism. I was like... Well, yeah, you'd be, you'd be ripping me out of a bar telling me how, you know, me and you are the same. Yeah, you don't want to hear that. No, no, I'm like, dude, I'm trying to fucking enjoy myself. But, you know, you weren't, you weren't lying <laughs> about a lot of the shit. Because, you know, you, I come old, you know, you grow older and you realize, like, all these fucking people around me want to do... Is fucking drink and do nothing, and they go to the same fucking bars to do the, the same. Watering hole. So they go to the same to drink the same fucking drink to try and bang the same Broads fucking girl from high school. To say, yeah. and it's just like, and then everyone starts dropping like fucking flies, and someone gets pregnant, someone overdoses, someone fucking moves out of state, and then you're left realizing like I fucking out, you know, I I outlasted all these fucking people, and wh- why was I hanging around with them? So that's what brings me to what I was saying before. I mean, with the social media generation, you know, it's important to be authentic. I mean, don't fall into the, you know, societal norms because chances are your first uh, choice in life was was probably what you should do. I mean, if you look at Billy, this guy, uh, you know, started riding when he was, what, 10, 11? Shit, I don't know. You started was, riding when riding you were really like young. three or four and then quit, like... Didn't quit, but like stopped for a little bit. You never know. quit. No, I just I played baseball, and then I realized I didn't like baseball as much. Yeah, see, the important thing, and this is why Billy gets to uh, do what he does, and this is why you and I are covered in dirt and shit, because we got to work jobs that we don't really. Yeah, like. but you own your own company. Yeah, yeah, I do. You I got do. people driving around your trucks around town. You show up and you you work <laughs> hard, but. Yeah, yeah. That, I guess I guess it's not too bad, but. My point is, is that you should remain authentic. I mean, stick to the script in your life. I mean, uh, you know, if there was something that you had a dream, you know, a dream of doing, you know, you should stick with that because it really quickly you can fall into the, uh, you know, the societal norm. You know, what, what are we going to do? We're going to, you know, c- keep up with the Joneses. I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to wrap a vinyl fence around it. I'm going to... Uh, you know, my, my girlfriend wants a new bag. I mean, you know, then you're going to the bar and you're drinking with the boys from high school every weekend. You don't even really know who you are. I mean, you know any, any of those people doing that stuff don't really know who you are. I mean, like you, Peter, you don't know who you are. I'm starting to figure out who I am. You might start to figure it out. But the first thing, the first step to figuring that out is... is losing your identity. <laughs> I know, man. D- dissolve your fucking identity. Get out of the bar. Stop. I know. Get rid of the hedonistic desires and... Uh, well, also a lot of people who conform to something they don't want to do, like working 9 to 5 out of college or whatever, they also 
they don't do what they love in their spare time anymore. They don't. Yeah, it disappears. Yeah, it's just like they they go home after their job. They watch Netflix for three hours and they go to sleep and they wake up and do it all again. Mm. Cyclic. Yeah, um, and, and you know there is a question. I mean, maybe these are weak people. Well, no, they're not necessarily weak because I think that this is almost. I think we we are the the fucking variable. I think that that is human nature. What's human nature? To to fucking to just find your duty and accept it. Well, that's what I was talking about. It is, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be authentic too. I mean, there's a balance. Well, I think some people just aren't authentic. They're just they just don't have the sense of identity. I mean, even even if my sense of identity is fucking false. Wow, that's weird. Well, you just drank that. You just throated it. At it. But ah. even if my even if my sense of identity might be false, you know what I'm saying? It, it it still is one, and I still perceive it to be real. Stop fucking with me with the fucking sound, bro. You know I don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying though? Like I think some people they well, they truly sorry to spit on you. They truly believe that the reason why they were put here is to fucking go to their fucking school, go to fucking college, get in debt, get some fucking job. Marry some, you know, for a girl, marry some fucking dude, Yo, whatever. Chill with the fucking. Nah, Jesus Christ, that's not bro. this. That's not this type of episode. You sound like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, now this episode is just littered with the f word. Fuck it. <laughs> but you know, what, you know what I'm saying though. <laughs> they think that they're they're literally their idea is to. They think that that is their, their course. That's their, well. That's who they are. I mean, and that's fine. That's fine when it's when it's you know when it's not hurting anybody. But I think it, you can look at the you know, chain of events in the world right now. I mean, the conditioning is just so hardcore, and everybody is so controlled by what's on their cell phone that you can incite a riot just by uh, you know sharing something on social media. I mean, the right person shares the wrong thing, and you know the whole world's in an uproar because people don't really know who they are at all. I mean, it's just everybody just following one, you know, it's one herd following each other. Yeah, and, it's, you know, I feel like a part of it is, too, is finding a balance of not being super outlandish to everybody else, but, you know, still maintaining a, a I sense mean, look, of... I mean, look at you, Peter. All week long, I sit on my phone, and I see you on the uh, social media, you know, you posting things. Well, what's going on? I'm, absor- I'm absorbed by it. I'm part of it. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's, something I, maybe it's something I need to figure out. I have no idea, dude. I mean, I used to, listen, when I used to drink, I used to post things on social media all the time. Like, I wanted people to think I was cool, I guess, or, uh, you know, whatever, that I was I was crazy, you know. And, I mean, most of the time, people don't really notice anything. I mean... Yeah, I think that's another thing. You don't realize how much people don't actually give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, and that's the crazy thing about, like, social media is that, Everybody's on there swearing to God that somebody gives a shit, and and nobody does. And I mean, if if we were all just being a little bit more of ourselves, we'd probably get get some great things done, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe a big part of it, this whole thing is, like I said, trying to maintain some some sense of identity and finding a purpose and a duty and 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 sticking to it. That's my advice to any Holy kid or shit. anything. Sorry about that. Is to stick to your stick to your guns. All right. Well, if you you know you guys were asking me about stories before in my life and my life experience, you, you got us all off topic, Peter. But Sorry. now now that you're talking about duty and you know that kind of stuff, it makes me think about myself a little bit. You know, and riding uh, BMX when I was younger. Um, you know, if you'd talk to me when I was 16, there was nothing else in the world that I was going to do. It was BMX. It was all day long. I was going to fucking 360 off a roof, grind a handrail. Nobody was filming anything yet because, I mean, cameras were the size of, uh, you know, a refrigerator back then. Um, and, and nobody had one unless they were rich. So Yeah, the VX was big. The VX was big. And we had one kid that had a VX and he would come out once a month and he would film. And then you wouldn't see the clips for Fucking months. a year. You would never see the clips. I'm still waiting for clips from, uh, you know, Mike Maneri and other Ten guys. Ten years ago. Yeah, I put it all right at, like, next week. Yeah? Remember that? 
Oh yeah, yeah. You, you. Well, you were a new move. I mean, but you're the young blood. And, and you the, picked me up. You, you didn't have a front seat. I feel like you were driving that Civic in the back. Seat, <laughs> oh my God, like, I remember that Civic. Hold the wheel, and you opened up this big thing of like 800 CDs, and I'm holding the wheel. I'm like 12 <laughs> years old. I've never held a driver's wheel in my life, and you're in the back seat digging through CDs. Where's the Blink 182? <laughs> you know, and that's funny. That's the funny thing about BMX and the transcendence. You know, like. When I started riding, I was like 11, 12 years old, and I would be up at Pudgy's in Deer Park, which isn't even Pudgy's anymore, and there were, there's these shitty concrete ledges up there that you know we would wax and grind, and every time I was riding in Deer Park, some kid would pull up, like, like you know, fucking beat up a cord, smoking a blunt with like five guys in the car, and he'd get out and be like, yo, little man, let me see your bike, I'm gonna do a 360, and bust out a perfect 360, and then get back into the car, drinking a 40, smoking a blunt. And we'd all be like, what the fuck happened to that guy? You know, he looks like he had some talent. That's and literally me. That's you, that's me, and that's that's my my point that I'm making here is that, you Peter know. Peter still does that. I think that's, I did that last no, week. That's literally me. Anytime yeah. I'm riding is that moment. I'm like, I take a break from my 40 and my blunt, and, like, I, I, I hit the bike. He saw I was in the city one night. He calls me up. Yo, come downtown. I, I meet up with him. He's wasted. He's in dress shoes and a tux. Grabs yeah, my bike, drives into traffic <laughs> on Canal Street, and does a perfect bar spin. Dude, I was riding my bike in a you suit one time. Yeah. No, I was 22. I had just moved to the city. My, I would clean my life up for a little bit. You and I were riding. I was meeting you somewhere, Pip Billy, and I was blasting down 23rd Street, and all of a sudden I hear Morrison, and I look to my right, and it's Peter. Oh yeah, in it's a me. Fucking it bus me. stop. I ride up to the bus stop. Oh, Guy's there, pupils though, yeah. are bulging out of his head. He's high as a kite, on ecstasy or, or mollies, whatever you guys call them these days. That you was look, not easy. Let's keep in mind, for viewers, this was had at least five years ago. You look terrible. And uh, yeah, I was. You know, I, was I met up with you, and I'm like, "What happened to that guy? You know, he needs to get his shit together." Um, I did partly. <laughs> can we stop getting off topic when I'm telling you? you guys wanted a story. I'm trying to explain something. So yeah, I when I was 16, all I would, could ever have seen myself doing is riding BMX, nothing else. I mean, I didn't care if I was going to be rich, poor, dead, if I was going to get laid, none of that. Didn't matter. I was going to ride. I was going to, you know, that's it. And uh, yeah, I guess I don't know. 17, I started dating a girl. All girls wanted to do back then was smoke weed and take Xanax and drink alcohol. And, oh my God, I know. <sighs> god they're the worst and then uh <laughs> you know and next thing i know my bike i didn't even know where it was oh, i mean sick. bro you know, like, i was in i was in somebody's car and they you know i'd be smoking weed with them and i'd be like they'd be like yo man where's your bike let's go find your bike man i want to watch you do a 360 and i'd be like i don't even know where my bike is man and you know like <laughs> that that's your idea of people who are high they just go man yeah everybody uh, that was me when i was 17 i mean i rolled up to johnny nemesex one time just name dropping on this thing to get my bike and uh you know i was all high and somebody drove me there and I got out of the car and Steve K kicked my ass. And I think Johnny <laughs> kicked my ass too. And they were they were kicking. My... <laughs> That's funny, right? They were kicking my ass because I was I was high. You know, I mean, anyone that's seen a Bronx Tale knows that the, uh, yeah. you know, that the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. I mean, you know. And, Holy and, shit. I'm still getting over that mental image of you just pulling up. Oh, dude, I was ripped. I was ripped. And I'm like, I pulled up and I was like, Johnny, where's my bike, bro? And Steve was just like, what? Boom. Just smashing me. He pulled me out of Charlie Hackett's car through the window and was just elbow dropping on me, beating my ass because I was high, you know, and I, I had a lot of talent high. at 16. And, and, and just like that, you know, it was just hedonism, outright meaninglessness nihilism and you know i combated that for 10 years me too i think the first the first the first beer that was cracked sipped and enjoyed by me was the f beginning of the end yeah yeah for yes. any type of hope of um bmx riding on like a even if you know yeah mildly professional level i was just like fuck this sorry for cursing again i was just like this sucks you know, once I had a car and girls came into play and and all that stuff, and I and I started, you know, my my my, you know how we're, we're reward driven, it yeah, went from yeah, being yeah, rewarded yeah. from a you know BMX trick to being rewarded from hooking up with a girl or you know 
getting a yeah, dude, and that reward it. is bullshit. I mean, I spent yeah, the BMX I, one was more pure from yeah. from twelve years old to when I was seventeen. I mean, the amount of hours I spent in parking lots by myself and at the Babylon train station and the 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 quote unquote Buddha ledge. In Babylon, which I don't know what you guys are calling it these days. That will forever um, be the butt alleged. Tanner Skate Park. I mean, how many times I cut school and hopped the train to the Brooklyn Banks back when, you know, it was cool. And um, thousands of hours spent bleeding and breaking things and, you know, fixing bicycle chains with a brick. and Sleeping the at the banks. Yeah, like, like you know. Stupid shit Just like that. stealing, a, you know, taking a wheel off a random bike on the bike rack and stealing the tube out of it. Just Robbing like, bodegas for fucking your dinner. Oh, aside from that, just so much energy put into riding BMX. And, you know, because you knew there was a reward. I mean, I, I'll take a bike right now and I'll, I'll still, like, 360 down the stairs or... And, and I haven't ridden in months, and I should suck. But, you know, when you learn that stuff in blood, it doesn't go away. But you, I mean, you trade that for, like, like wiggling your pecker around in some girl. And what do you I got know. afterwards? You got nothing. An STD. <laughs> Maybe, uh, you know, just a little less semen. Um, a know, feeling and, of emptiness. Yeah, and that's why it's important. Post-nut you know, clarity. Yeah, post-nut clarity. Is so real. <laughs> You're such a loser. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, that's why, and that's why it's important to be authentic. I mean, across the board, don't be with the world. Give Morrison. me some of this shit, Morrison. Listen, everybody on the planet wants to have sex. I mean, that's just your handed down biological nature. Not everybody's gonna take a bicycle and do the shit that Billy does. I mean, they're just not. This guy is like a top athlete in the fucking on the planet right now. Not everyone's gonna take a bike. Nose manual across this table and double bar spin off. You know, it is. But, no you know, Peter, anyone will take one of your girls and get a nut off. Of <clears throat> That's fucking true. Anyone. I'm, anyone. I'm, very, I'm very simple. Now, a 14 year old will. I'll go find a 14 year old. I mean, and, and they'll do that. Take my bitch. Yeah, because that's what everyone wants to do, the whole planet. I mean, you know, so that's important to be authentic. I mean, everybody's on Instagram chasing what? Clothes, cars, broads. The same old shit, hedonism, and, you know, when, when you should be chasing whatever your dream is, because that's what you're going to be good at. And you know what? If you don't have what it takes, I mean, shit, maybe you just die. I agree with you. And that's why I brought you on here, <laughs> because I wanted you to try and break it down for some of these kids and let them know that this Instagram shit isn't everything. Numbers aren't everything. Whatever you're going through right now isn't forever. No, nothing you're into is going to be forever. Nothing's going to be around forever. So lighten up. Have fun. Don't necessarily worry about what's going on around you at all times. All this narcissistic fucking... Because even I'm a victim of it, and I'm starting to learn how to break the mold. And that's what I'm saying. I'm saying break the mold. Yeah, you got to. You know what I mean? You got to let go of all that attachment. So yeah, thank you for fucking coming on here, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. I feel like uh, I feel like you probably opened the minds of a couple of kids. You think Is so? Is there anything else you want to get out? I yeah. don't know. Well, Loggersville, <laughs> the novel co- should be coming what next next spring maybe. Yeah, next next decade maybe. If yeah. We're lucky. You guys that, could catch it in like 2020. That is a definition of an era for you though. What? Loggersville. Oh well, a different era. Same same manic behavior, just uh, <laughs> you know, different bullshit. <laughs> True that. All right, I think you, that just about. Wraps you guys want to close this up? Yeah, I want to go fucking be a hedonist. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> thanks for some, thanks, some, thanks for coming on. You Chris. just made Pete really depressed for the rest of the evening. Yeah, I'm gonna go text every ex girlfriend I have and <laughs> okay. let him know I could have been more. No, and, and, <laughs> and I'll, I'll close this out with uh, I, because you probably are feeling depressed. Listen, anyone out there, especially if you ride. Because riding it can be a lonely thing sometimes. Um, if you are feeling <laughs> depressed, that's good because you're working through something and you should feel depressed and work through it instead of you know doing what Peter's going to do. He's going to go text his girlfriends. If you're depressed, don't go on Instagram and look for gratification. Just sit with yourself for a minute and you know and it passes. All right. And if it doesn't get on medication, FTL Podcast <laughs> Four. <laughs>